Hello everyone, so in this tutorial we're going to learn about D flip-flop and to learn about D flip-flop we'll need the help of SR flip-flop alright so this is the truth table for SR flip-flop and this is the block diagram for SR flip-flop alright so two inputs S and R and two outputs obviously Q was the main output and Q prime was just the complement for that output okay so now we're going to build D flip-flop based upon SR flip-flop so in the SR flip-flop we can see that one of the state one one this was actually unusable in case of SR flip-flop so that was basically a problem right so to, to solve that problem uh, D flip-flop was introduced and what was done here is that so we're not going to keep two separate inputs now we're going to change one input into the negative of another input alright so basically so this is one input and this is basically just the complement of the other input so the outputs remain the same so one is Q and the other is Q prime obviously however the inputs in the case of S and R so these are not two separate inputs now so R is basically the complement of S alright so we can just change the naming for this for this specific example so we're going to change the naming and we're going to write them as D and D prime alright so S and R got replaced by D and D prime right so take a look at the truth table for SR flip-flop so if we change the naming from S and R to D and D prime and here we can see that if D is basically 0 right if D is 0 then D prime would be 1 right because d prime is just the complement of d and if uh, d is 1 then d prime would be 0 right so that means we can only get 0 1 or 1 0 as the combinations for d flip flop we cannot get 0 0 or 1 1 because one input is basically the complement of another input so you will never be able to get 0 0 or 1 1 in the case of D flip-flop so from the truth table of SR flip-flop if we replace S and R by D and D prime and since we cannot get 0 0 and 1 1 uh, so we can just uh, cancel out those two rows right so we'll cancel the first row and we'll also cancel the last row so that means the remaining part is actually the truth table for D flip-flop and since D prime is just the complement of D we can ignore the column for D prime and this becomes the actual truth table for D flip-flop which is written right here alright so here we can see D and Q and Q prime so you can see that this is clearly uh, this clearly can be derived from SR flip-flop truth table alright so we just showed it right here and this is the truth table of D flip-flop okay so in the next part we're gonna be seeing how we can derive the characteristic table and excitation table uh, with the help of truth table of D flip-flop so let's move forward so we're going to build the characteristic table of D flip-flop uh, with the help of truth table of D flip-flop just like what we did in the case of SR flip-flop right so here's the truth table for D flip-flop we have just derived uh, this one in our uh, previous slide right so now we're going to build the characteristic table based upon this truth table so in the characteristic table there are, al there are always uh, two parts so in the left part will write the flip-flop input and the present state the present state is Q Q T alright and uh, the flip-flop input is only D in case of D flip-flop so basically two variables and for two variables we get four separate combinations so 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 and in the right side we'll write the next state which is Q T plus 1 okay so for the first row here we can see that the flip-flop input is zero right here okay so we'll go back to the truth table and we'll see that for d equals to zero what did we get in the case of output alright so the main output was actually q so for d equals to zero we got q equals to zero and for d equals to one we got q equals to one right so we got 
some values directly from the truth table all right so there were no cases of uh, memory slash no change or not used or something like that so we got direct values and since we are getting direct well uh, we are getting values directly so we can just write these values in our characteristic table so for d equals to 0 q equals to 0 for d equals to 1 q equals to 1 right and here in the characteristic table in the first row d equals to 0 so that means in the next state the value would be 0 based upon this value over here and for the next row we can see the d equals to 1 so for the truth table states that if d equals to 1 then q would be 1 so that means in the next state we can write 1 directly and again if d equals to 0 the next state would be 0 and if d equals to 1 then the next state would be 1 so basically what we are seeing here is that we don't need the help from the present state in the case of writing the next state right so that's because in case of d flip-flop we did not come uh, face to face with uh, any kind of state that says not used or memory slash no change so it gives direct values right so that's why we can write the values directly in the next state we don't have any kind of mm, we necessity to look uh, at the present state so basically present state doesn't have any effect on the next state in case of d flip-flop okay so this is the characteristic table now from the characteristic table we can clearly build the excitation table all right so in the excitation table there are always two parts in the left part that would be the present state and the next state which is q and q plus and for these two variables there would be four combinations 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, and in the right part the flip-flop input uh, will write the flip-flop input and in this case that would only be d all right so for the first row in the present state if the present state is 0 and next state is 0 then I go back to the characteristic table and we can uh, we will try to find out this specific combination where the present state is 0 and the next state is 0 so this is the first row basically where the present state is 0 and the next state is 0 and if the present state is 0 and the next state is 0 then the flip-flop input would produce the value of 0 and we can write that value over here for the next row if present state is 0 and next state is 1 so this is the next combination present state is 0 and next state is 1 so d would be 1 so here we write 1 so if present and next state are 1 and 0 respectively so we go back to the characteristic table and we try to find out that specific combination and we can see the value of d is 0 so we write that value and for the last combination 1 1 okay we go back to the characteristic table and we try to find that specific combination where the present state and next state are 1 and 1 and we try to find out the value for d and we write that value over here in the excitation table all right so this is the excitation table for d flip-flop so that is it for this tutorial in the next tutorial we're going to be learning about jk flip-flop